All right, appreciate everybody being here again, especially on a, a holiday weekend, holiday uh, today. So just to recap a little bit about um, Jackson State, I'm not going to go into a bunch of detail about it, but I was really proud of our effort. thought we played a clean and smart, disciplined game. So I thought from a first game standpoint, I thought it was really nice, uh, a nice job by our players and, and coaches. Uh, Alabama this week um, is a great challenge for us. It's a great opportunity to play against one of the storied programs in the history of college football. Uh, everybody knows their, their past history and everything they've done. Um, what I found was pretty um, incredible. The last seven years, at one point in the season, they've been ranked number one, the number one team in the country. Uh, the last seven years at one point in the season. So that just shows you the consistency and the dominance that they've had over the last you know decade, really. Um, they're a very well-coached team. Uh, coach Saban does a great job. Their assistant coaches do a phenomenal job as well. They've got great players. Uh, you know, so it's a great opportunity and a great challenge for us. So it's one we're looking forward to. Uh, again, we don't practice today. Uh, we cleaned up Jackson State yesterday and started a little bit of on, on Alabama, but we'll start full focus with our players uh, tomorrow with Alabama when they come into practice. But uh, really, really excited about this opportunity as a coach, and, uh, and I know our players are, are looking forward to it as well. So with that, I'll open it up to your questions. <clears throat> Coach, uh, what are you telling your offensive line? I know there's a lot of shifting going on. You have Chandler Brewer at left tackle. What are you telling them ahead of this week and uh, preparing them for Alabama's defensive line? Well, Chandler's been there really since uh, probably the third or fourth practice uh, since DJ and Carlos have been out. So this he's been getting coached a, a bunch uh, here this the first four weeks of the season. But... Uh, Alabama's front, their front seven, is is uh, rated the the number one front seven in the country. Uh, they've got really good players. They're big guys that can run. We've just got to do a great job from an offensive line standpoint. We've got to do a great job fundamentally. We've got to play lower uh, than what we did yesterday or Saturday. We've got to be great fundamentally, and we've got to stay on blocks. Um, You've got to strain. You've got to finish every play, uh, and it's especially a team like this is as big and fast as they are. We've got to just do a great job fundamentally and and um, play with tenacious, just a tenacious, tenacious attitude, great effort, and uh, finish every play. Uh, your defensive line bottled up the running backs of Jackson State. You know, held Jackson State to just under two yards per carry. Uh, going up against Alabama this this week, uh, you know, they have a stable of running backs just like MTSU. Uh, on the other side of the line, what are you telling your defensive line and linebackers as they prepare to face these stable of running backs? Well, they, they've got a great running back. They're, again, they've, you know, I've known about him since he's probably in the fifth or sixth grade. He's from Uly, Florida, right outside of Fernandina where I'm from, and everybody's been calling me and telling me about this kid since he was in elementary school. So I've uh, known, known about him for a long time. He's a really good player. He runs hard. He's big. He's, he fa he's fast. He runs behind his pads. Their offensive line, again, is well coached. They do a great job. And our defensive line, our, our linebackers, you know, we've again, it, it kind of, you got to be fundamentally sound. you got to do what you're coached to do. Uh, you've got to, conversely, we got to get off blocks. We got to strain. We got to get off blocks. We got to tackle well. We've got to gain tackle. We got to get everybody, we got to get 11 hats to the ball uh, and play a physical uh, game defensively like we did last week. Coach, I asked you after Jackson State if you had watched any film on Alabama. You said you hadn't watched a single snap. Has that changed from Saturday to Monday? <laughs> a little bit, yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, we started watching it yesterday, Sunday. Uh, started breaking it down. And, and so I've watched a bunch, you know, all day yesterday and all night and then a little bit here this morning since we've been in. So, um, yeah, I've watched a bunch of film. Coach, uh 
the media is not really giving you a, much of a chance on, on, on this one. Uh, how do you keep that out of the player's head and keep them focused? Ignore the noise. I don't listen to any – I don't – no offense, but we don't listen to the media. You know, the, if – why go down there and play if you guys say we're not, we don't have a chance? So I don't listen to all that stuff. Our players don't listen to all that stuff. We know what kind of team we are. We know what kind of players we have. And uh, we'll prepare this game. It's not about Alabama. I told them this yesterday. It's about us. we got to get better. There's enough things that we did in the Jackson State game that uh, we got to get corrected. We did a lot of good things. And we'll continue to build on those. But uh, we're going to bust our tail this week and get ready mentally and physically. Uh, to go down there and play a good Alabama football team. Coach, how would you, uh, just touching a little bit on the Jackson State game, how would, you, how would you evaluate your running back's performance ahead of this Alabama game? And Alabama, on that note, Alabama's struggled typically against, you know, a three running back. I don't know if you call it a system, but, you know, three running backs at a time. How would you, uh, what are you telling your running backs heading into this game? Well, to answer your first question, I thought our backs, uh, Shane and Jeremiah and Jordan, I thought they all had a, a good game. Um, Shane put one on the ground down at the goal line. That we were fortunate enough, CC recovered it. Um, you know that was probably the the glaring mistake there. Jordan had a penalty. You know on the touchdown pass. You know he cut the guy when we were already engaged. Uh, you know so those two mistakes there. Um, we, we'll, we'll get cleaned up. Um, I thought I thought they ran hard. I thought Jeremiah ran good. I thought he looked fast. I thought Shane made some nice cuts. I thought Jordan ran good. So I thought all three of them ran good. Uh, the, again, the most impressive thing about them is their selflessness. Uh, you know, they they when Jeremiah scored, uh, you know, Shane and Jordan were his biggest cheerleaders. When Shane scored, Jeremiah and Jordan were his biggest cheerleader, same with Jordan. So I love their attitude. I love how they work. Uh, I love how they compete. And I thought they had a nice opening game. Uh, to answer your back end of your question, uh, I don't think Alabama struggled against backs. They, they allowed 40 yards rushing against Wisconsin. Uh, and Wisconsin is a, is a power running team, you know, so, uh, uh, they, they, we've got to do a great job running the football. We've got to do because uh, they're they're really good against the run, as they proved against Wisconsin, only giving up 40 yards. Looking at the preparation going into Saturday's game, how does the the game plan really change on defense, knowing they have Coker and Bateman at quarterback? Doesn't change. I, I think the big thing, you know, the last year Alabama was, you know, a lot of 10 personnel. Uh, you know, up tempo, no huddle. Now they're really changing their personnel groups. They're getting into, you know, they're still 10 personnel. They're still going up tempo. They don't, you know, they're not huddling. Uh, but now they're utilizing, they got a couple tight ends in there. They're utilizing them. They're, there's a lot of motion. Uh, this is a game where you've got to be able to communicate on defense. Uh, because you're going to see a lot of different formations. You're going to see a lot of different personnel groupings. Uh, and then when you mix that in with tempo that they run, it makes it puts that much more stress on your defense. So uh, we've got to do a good job communicating. But uh, they're not changing uh, their offensive uh, play calling based on what quarterback's in there. <clears throat> when, uh, when this schedule was made, was the plan to have a – challenge this big this early to better prepare you for the CUSA schedule? I don't get a vote on, you know, who we play, when we play, all that. You know, basketball, you know, they can play, you know, games earlier in the season where you hear basketball coaches always say it'll prepare us, you know, for the conference schedule. Uh, in football, you don't have that luxury. You know, it's – you know, we've, we've played SEC schools the next to last game of the year. So uh, it didn't, this didn't have any bearing on that, no, sir. Is Brent going to be your primary quarterback this week, or are you still planning on playing both Brent and Austin this week? I told you last week that we'll play both quarterbacks. 
Both quarterbacks played last week. Brent will be the starter. Talking about Brent specifically starting, only his second start he has to go to Alabama. What are the talks that you've had with him? Uh, he's ready. I mean, that, he's no different than anybody else. He'll be, he'll be, he'll prepare himself mentally. I haven't told him anything. It's, I'm not going to tell. Hey, you're going to Alabama. You got to do this. Hey, Jeremiah. Hey, KB. We're going to Alabama. It's, it's Alabama. Let's go play. And uh, he he played well last last week, and he'll prepare himself mentally. Uh, and physically this week, and uh, you know it's um, he, he'll be ready to play. <clears throat> Coach, um, given Alabama's success and Nick Saban specifically his success over the years, uh, almost wherever he's been. Are there anything, is there anything about him, things he does that you try to emulate or have tried to emulate over the years to implement into your program because you knew it or you saw that it worked for him? I try to study all, as many coaches as I can. I try to read about as much as I can, basketball coaches, baseball, football coaches. I talk to our team a lot about you know, pop out there at San Antonio with the Spurs and some things that they do. Yes, I, I try to, I try to listen and read and study successful people. You know, primarily coaches, but anybody in a leadership role, I try to study. <clears throat> excuse me, and learn from them. And um, you know, I think he's done a great job of staying in the moment, telling you know it's not looking ahead, you know, it's about you. You hear him talk about the process all the time. Uh, and that's what we try to do, you know, is we worry about ourselves, not who we're playing. And I told our team where it's a, yesterday, it's a faceless opponent. Just worry about us because we can't control what Alabama's going to do. And, uh, <clears throat> but yes, I do try to uh, study Coach Saban and listen and, and read about him as much as I can. What have you uh, heard from your mentor, Bobby Bowden, about the SEC and Alabama? Well, you know, Coach Bowden, when I was playing for him, he loved Bear Bryant. He lo he's from Alabama, and he used to talk about them to us all the time. So, But I haven't talked to him. Uh, you know, talked to him in the summer, uh, but I haven't talked to him this week. And, uh, you know, but I have, like I said, everybody knows how much I respect Coach Bowden and everything he's done for me and how he's helped me in my life. But uh, I know, you know, how much he respects Alabama uh, and will respect Alabama as well. Talking with the players, I talked to Ed after Jackson State. He said Alabama ties their shoes up the same way that, that MTSU does. Talking with TT first press conference, he said they put on the pads the same way we do. Is that just the mindset throughout the entire team going into Alabama this Saturday? I hope it's the mindset next week, the next week, the next week. I just Let's go play. You know, it's, Alabama's a good team. Everybody knows that. They won a bunch of national championships. I already told you they've been ranked number one, you know, for seven straight years at some point in the season. They're a good team, you know. Uh, we're a good team. We got good players. And, uh, yeah, you're going to go down there and you're going to play in front of over 100,000 people against a great team, uh, a well-coached team. And, uh, you know, we'll, we're, we'll be ready to play. I promise you that. Our guys, we're not going to back down, you know, from anybody. We're going to get ready to play and and uh, prepare this week to play better than we did last week. And and uh, who you play shouldn't determine how you prepare. Who you play shouldn't determine uh, how hard you play. You know, and that's what I say all the time that it's. 
It's not who you play. It's about us. And if you get up for this game, but you're not going to get up for that game, then you're not going to play consistent football. And uh, you've got to approach every game the same way, no matter who it is. And uh, so that, that's what we do. And that's, uh, you know, we're not going to prepare any different next week playing Charlotte than we are this week playing Alabama. We're not, we're not preparing any differently this week for Alabama than we did last week for Jackson State. You know, it's, uh, you got to get ready to play every game week in and week out because uh, in college football today, uh, you know, there, there's not a whole lot of separation between teams. What will you tell the players to maybe like look back on as far as facing the 100,000 people in, in that environment? You know, that's, that's a good question. And, and any time, you know, as an athlete, you've only got so many snaps. You've only got so many games. And for the seniors, you know, you know they're down to 12 games now. And so it goes fast. And your college experience as an athlete, you know, you want to try to create memories. You want to, you want to enjoy and embrace everything that you're exposed to. And, and these guys will, you know, a lot of these guys, you know, were sophomores, I think, uh, when we beat Georgia Tech. And that's a, going down there, that's a great memory for those guys. Uh, beating Jackson State last yes two days ago is a great memory. You know, going to Alabama and playing, like I said, a tradition, the history and tradition of that program in front of 100,000 people is a great memory. If they're fortunate enough to go to the NFL, they're not going to play in front of 100,000 people. You know, I don't think. I don't think there's 100,000 <laughs> seat stadiums in the NFL. So this is a great memory, a great opportunity, you know, for us to go down and play one of the great programs of all time in college football. Coach, complete this sentence. We will be in this game with Alabama if we do what? If we don't turn the ball over and we tackle well on defense and we don't give up any big plays in the kicking game. It can't just – it's not just going to be one thing. You can't give them a short field. we got to do a great job protecting the ball. We can't give up explosive plays, and explosive plays a lot of time are a result of missed tackles. And then uh, the kicking game, you know, you can't give up a big return. Uh, you can't let them create some momentum in the kicking game. So I think those three things are, are going to be critical in this game. 